Hello guys, today I'm here with a very special guest, Lisa Hughes, she's back. <laughs> she is back and you guys have been commenting for pretty much the whole summer just about wanting me to do a video with my mom about her zero waste lifestyle and just explaining that, so that's what we're gonna do today. Yeah, she hasn't awesome. been on camera besides the vlog in a while, but she's excited. I am excited. We're gonna be taking some of you guys' questions from Twitter because we just wanna be able to like help you guys. My initial question that I think other people might have is like, does zero waste living actually mean zero waste or does it just mean like as little as possible? No, okay, so yes and no. It's a model. So if you were to look at the cities like San Francisco and some of the other cities that have gone zero waste, what they're doing is adopting a, a zero waste model. So our current model for trash and waste is linear. Something comes into my house, it eventually breaks down and I throw it away and I go get another one. Mm -hmm. So that is a not sustainable pattern because it's just one direction into the earth. A zero waste style is more of a circular pattern. So uh, something might come in, but then I'm looking at that material, whether it can be recycled, whether it can be reused. Maybe I can even refuse having that come into my home because I know on the other end, there's no other option for that piece of yeah. thing other than the trash. So if I know that ahead of time, that's the first order of refuse. And like any model, um, you're not opting for perfection. Right. Because you can't really expect, especially like going into something, you can't really expect, oh, I'm just not going to ever create another piece of trash. That's just not realistic, right? It's not realistic. Right. So and it's, it's not realistic, especially if you live with other people. Yeah. Right? You right. Can, you can control your own footprint, but you really can't control the footprint of other people. Single use items too, like paper plates and paper towels and things that you literally use one time. Like a napkin, you know, you know, like when you go to fast food or whatever and they just give you like 30 napkins and you're like, I just don't need this. Right. Yeah, so refusing. Or straws, refusing the straws. Wherever you are to just um, get in the habit of you know, yes, we would like some water, no straw. Yeah, like we don't need we don't need a straw, we don't need any extra napkins, things like that. Okay, so this is a good like opening it up question and it's just when did you start incorporating zero waste into your life and was the process difficult? Yeah. Um, so I started fourteen months ago. I love to camp and I love to backpack and I had literally spent about a month on the weekends um, backpacking and hiking and adopting that kind of leave no trace. And I came back one day to the kitchen and I just, everybody was home and there was just stuff everywhere and I thought, how can we do this in the woods? And then we come home and we just start trashing everything. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe just in the kitchen, we could just do adopt a leave no trace. So if I came down to make my breakfast and somebody came down after me, they would have no idea that anybody was there. So it kind of started a little bit like that. And then I thought that I needed one day, I thought I needed fabric softener. And I went to Target and it's no problem with Target, but that's the last time I ever set foot in there. I stood in that giant aisle of plastic and I, I just bawled my eyes out. I, all I saw was all those big containers of fabric softener, laundry detergent. It, at that point to me, it was like, I might as well take that big jug and just throw it out of my car window. That's how I felt. And I thought, you can't come home. I don't know what to do, but let me find out. Um, so I got B. Johnson's book because I started talking about it and people said, oh, you should get Zero Waste Home. It's just about learning where it goes. Yeah, like being um, more conscious of like, okay, when I throw this away and I forget about it, you know, where where is it going? And even right. before then, right? Yeah. Does it even need to come into my house? For instance, yeah. chips, chip bags. That's a big one because they really cannot be like re they can't be much. recycled and then there are great great companies and we'll hopefully talk more about this too companies like TerraCycle so we don't not ever have chips but when we have chips I collect the bags because there's a program through TerraCycle where I can mail them in free and they recycle them there's a lot of things in this house like that that right. now have a waste stream that that is circular and they're gonna get recycled even if you can't do it 
like with our system. Yes, even if you can't do it curbside, there's always a way. I'll do another question. This is from Ellie and she says, how to do this in college when you have a dorm or apartment situation with roommates? You're right. Hmm. So I would say, don't worry about the roommates. Perhaps when we'll, we'll concentrate on our own footprint, there's some kind of model established just for you that they might be interested enough in that they start asking you about it. Uh, but of course, if you ever force a lifestyle on somebody else, it's like trying to change their political beliefs. This is never ever going to happen yeah. if you require it. Watch your own footprint. Maybe everybody has their own trash receptacle and they're responsible for it. It can't become your problem what they're throwing away, I guess is what I'm saying. It, yeah. it happens, it happens here all the time where I just open the big thing that goes out to the curbside and I, I can't help looking in there. I look in there and it's like, oh no. She looks at me you in know. my dad's trash. <laughs> the, I throw away as does. little as I can, but... Everybody some, tries. Yeah. No one's ever gonna get on board. I shouldn't say that there's lots of people on board with zero waste, but how people come into it is how people come into it. Uh, like how I did, like how you are. You can only be responsible for what comes into your space and what leaves your space. Yeah, and I think also like educating yourself on what you can recycle and how to, because there's a lot of things that you, that you can recycle that you might not even think about, right? Right. We live in a, a throwaway culture. Yeah. I, I consume, we're just consuming goods f at a far, far greater pace than we need yeah. to be doing. Other cultures don't do this, and we just seem to sort of grasping at more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. Does it need to come home with you to begin with? That plastic bag in the grocery yeah. store, you know? If you forget like your bags things. in your car, go back out to the car and get them. Life without plastic is another great place where you can get stainless steel containers for your sandwich, for your lunch. Yeah, I think um, that's a good thing to talk about is like, what are, what are you, can you hold your, your food in and things like that and what do you go to like the grocery store with when you're getting things just not have all of this extra waste and it depends where you live the grocery shopping is a big thing because i think everybody can say okay you know i'm ready to do it and then you go well how yeah how do we do that in a a, a germaphobic world where even lately um bunches of bananas are packaged in plastic. I mean, it's it's insane. You go like, it, it actually comes in its own natural container. Yeah. And then we're wrapping it in styrofoam and plastic. So in terms of the grocery store, you want to look at packaging, like at things that can never come into your home because there is no waste stream for them is styrofoam. But you have to figure out other ways. So when I was making dog food, I would bring my glass mason jars and I would just put them up on the butcher counter and they would put the meat in the jars and then I would put the top on. I've tried that in a couple of different places. Most people are really interested and if they're interested, they get my business. Yeah. If they make fun of me, I don't usually go back. How do you do these things? And you just say, well, I don't have a trash can at home. And people spend so much time <laughs> thinking about that, they're just like, Oh, we'll just put your meat in there then. Yeah. Um, this is a good one. What about stuff like toilet paper, paper towels, and stuff that comes packaged already? The first room I started zero wasting in was the kitchen, and the first thing to go was paper towels. Nobody needs them. Yeah. You, you know, my mother, when I got married, gave me this whole big thing of rags, and I still had all of them that were never being used for anything. Rags. Um, we always have rags. Paper towels really are a habit, and think about like, even if you just go to a public restroom, everybody takes two. Mm -hmm. Why do we take two? It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. It's more than we really need to do the job. So even if you just learn to take one, you're using half of what you mm -hmm. used to use. So that's really great progress. Um, to get rid of them entirely is fantastic. So paper towels, stop buying them. You don't need them. And if you have them, just move them to a different part of the house. If you have them, house. yeah, don't, you, don't use them, you know, if someone else in your house is 
buying them. You don't need napkins, paper napkins. You can, you know, have cloth napkins and you can just wash all of these things in your laundry that you already do. So it's really not, you know, that much of a difference. It's just kind of like training yourself to just not like reach for the paper towel. <laughs> and toilet paper comes, you know, as soon as you remove your paper towels, you're going to think, oh my gosh, what do we do with the toilet paper? Um, we buy it a 100% made from recycled paper toilet paper and it's wrapped in paper. Yeah. So it's about, it's 99 cents a roll. When the roll is done, there's the little cardboard thing. Totally compostable, totally recyclable. I take the paper from, as I unwrap the toilet paper roll, I shove it inside of the tube and we use those for fire starters when we're camping. There's also might... a company called Who Gives a Crap? Oh. And they will deliver toilet paper from recycled material to your door. It's the same thing, it's about a dollar a roll and um, the wrappings have really funny sayings on them. Like, who gives a crap? <laughs> yeah, you don't need like five-ply five toilet paper if you really think about it. Okay, um, what do you do about cartoned items like milk and eggs? Do you have a co-op that you shop at that allows you to package items yourself? We make our own almond milk from, I buy almonds in bulk, and we make almond milk from that. Eggs I get from, I, we do a farm share, a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, and every week I go to a pickup location, I get a box of fresh vegetables that don't have any produce stickers on them, and you get what you get. Every other week I get fresh eggs, and when the carton is done, I just bring it back to him. And for other things, you bring your muslin bags. So do you want to say where you got those? And yeah. Should, do we have any to show? So I have two sizes. I love this size for nuts and dates. So I go to Sprouts and I get everything that I can find in bulk. These bags came from, there's lots of people on Etsy that make them. And sure, you can make them yourself if you're crafty that way. So this size, but you're gonna want the big size too because you're gonna buy lots of nuts, lots of oats, rice. Put your loaf of bread in there. If you guys mm -hmm. saw the last video with the loaf haul. <laughs> did you do a loaf? <laughs> well, no, I just did like a car vlog, but like I showed my three loaves. That's great. Um, what are small ways you can eliminate waste? I don't think I can do fully zero waste life yet, but what are some places I can cut down it? As we talked about in the beginning, the very first thing is just take every single single use item and just stop using it. Everything from uh, makeup wipe removers, baby wipes, straws, plastic utensils, napkins, paper towels. So you don't think about that. Single use plastic water bottles. Those are the worst. Bug wipes. Uh, anything that's in a pre-wipe form, you know, years ago, none of that even existed. An important thing is just be, even being conscious of it because I mean, I feel like so many people you just don't even you don't even really think about it you know it's like our entitled culture culture to just think of when i throw something away you know like it's just gonna it's just gone it's out of my life i don't have to think about it anymore but that's really not the case it's so crazy to think about all the times you use like a napkin or you grab like two or three paper towels and you just throw it away throw it away throw it away like see how fast you know your trash is like filling up and really see how long it's even taking you to, to fill your trash can. And also like, I've lived in places that don't even have like recycling. And I had to like speak to my front desk and be like, how do I recycle? And it's like, oh, going like, take it like downstairs, take it behind the building. So, I mean, some places just don't even care about like offering recycling and that's, mm -hmm. well, don't we have to pay for our, don't we have to we pay do. to recycle like living in a house? We do, but it, you know, it's nominal. It's $15 a month or something like that. And every municipality has a recycling center. You just have to figure out where it is. Yeah. But anything that comes in the mail has those plastic air pillows. Yeah. Uh, anything that you buy is in plastic film. You're watching all those new items. Anything that you can purchase, uh, it's another area small that you can do. Uh, you want a book, go to Better World Books, get the same exact book used for three bucks instead of you know, 25 with the plastic wrapping and all of that. What can you buy used? My bicycle is used, my stand-up paddleboard is used, 
um, there's some things that for sure you can get used and it won't have any packaging whatsoever. And a lot of companies, if you order something, um, and just to, there'll be that little box for comments and I'll say, you know, it's a zero waste home, uh, as little extra packaging as possible, please no promotional materials. And use a reusable water bottle. We like oh, absolutely. the stainless steel. If you're not already doing this, please stop buying single-use plastic water bottles. Like if you really think about it, it's just so easy to to not. You know what I mean? Like your water will stay colder in this, your water will stay fresher. Like let's say you buy that plastic water bottle and you go, oh okay, well it's recyclable. In theory, yes but it gets smushed down, it gets tossed on barges, it gets shipped to other countries where, oh, accidents happen, it falls off the barge, or it finally gets to that other country that's just willing to take it, and they throw it in the ocean. Or, you know, it sinks the to lids, the bottom of the all ocean. All the lids of the, and the label around it, that stuff None is None of all the lids are recyclable. That is gonna stay in the environment forever and it goes to the bottom of the ocean where it breaks up into microplastics and this is really a huge problem because you have um, giant whales that sift through, they think they're getting plankton and they're getting microplastics and they're dying, these huge sea animals are dying. Watch A Plastic Ocean, that's an excellent film where they really set out to study something else and they found this plastic vortex. That is why water doesn't come in plastic a clean canteen, put some Hopefully. stickers on it, make it cute. Okay. And carry it with you. Stick <laughs> it on your purse and always have it with you. Yes, your reusable water bottle. It will change your life, especially when traveling. I would always complain that at the airport after I, go, well, after I went through security, I would have to spend $5 on a giant bottle of water for my flight. Um, not if you just bring an empty reusable water bottle. Literally just bring it empty because obviously through security you can't have any liquids. And then just fill it up. So every airport that I've been to in the last like year, two years has um, a filling thing by the water. You don't have to pay for it. It's just a every filling airport, thing. Every airport, every concert, every yeah. festival. Water is probably one of the easiest ways that you could. And you don't have to like make all, obviously like all of these changes. Like obviously my mom is so much more like dedicated to her lifestyle and I just like try. Just being more conscious and just little ways that you can, you know, try to, like you said, not bring it in and just knowing things like styrofoam can never be broken down and they're never gonna be like recycled and used again. And it is a mindfulness practice, mm -hmm. just like meditation or yoga. Yeah. If we're mindless about it. We th if we think that there's an away place for it, then we're not even aware. But once you start really studying, well, where does it go after it leaves my curbside? And once you understand that, you can't not understand it. Once you know something, you can never unknow it. Hopefully we've done a, a little bit of job of just raising awareness of that. Um, this planet belongs to you guys. You are the youth and you are hopefully gonna have children and what do you wanna to pass to them? It's just a beautiful, beautiful planet. Whatever element you choose to begin with will be just perfect and you'll find that it's connected to every other element. So pretty soon uh, you're using also less water, you're polluting the air less. Yeah. It's connected to everything. We will leave um, my mom's Instagram, which is at zero waste zen in the description box. We'll also leave we'll leave some some links to maybe like your bags and mason jars and just like easy things, maybe just some helpful right. links for you guys. The book that you read and things like that. So we'll have all of those links down below for you guys to check out. Go follow Zero Waste Zen. Follow Zero Waste Zen. <laughs> Any recipes that I put on there for making um, products like deodorant at home, um, I only put up what works. There's a lot of stuff out there just that bad. just doesn't work. And uh, when it comes to deodorant, I wanna make sure if I make that product <laughs> and I go to that time that, that is it is actually going to work. Thank you, Mom, for being in my video. Oh, thanks and for, for having all of me. your help. What a great, great, uh, fun topic. Yes. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks, um, guys. Lisa will, you know, as always, be making appearances in the vlogs. You can find her on Instagram. That's her primary platform of choice. It is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, thank you, you guys, guys for watching. Bye. Bye now.